Welcome back. Today we're talking about Shakespeare's Othello, and we're finally hitting Act 5, The Grand Conclusion. So, when we left off in Act 4, the tension was really building, and there was Desdemona waiting for her husband to return. And we all know that Othello plans to kill her as soon as he returns. The emotions are high, the action is intense, and we come to the conclusion, the resolution of the play, which, as it says tragedy on the cover, is going to be a messy one. Before we get to the scene between Othello and Desdemona, however, we still have Iago's plans for Cassio. Remember how Iago manipulated Rodrigo into a plan to kill Cassio. He gives Rodrigo one more pat on the back and then steps back to watch as Rodrigo goes to attack Cassio. As Rodrigo's walking away, Iago says, I have rubbed this young quat almost to the sense, and he grows angry. Now, whether he kill Cassio, or Cassio him, or each do kill the other, every way makes my gain. Live, Rodrigo, he calls me to a restitution lard of gold and jewels that I bobbed from him as gifts to Desdemona. It must not be. If Cassio do remain, he hath a daily beauty in his life that makes me ugly. And besides, the more may unfold me to him, and there I stand in much peril. No, he must die. But so, I hear him coming. So Iago really just wants them both to kill each other and resolve two of his problems. So Rodrigo sneaks up behind Cassio and attempts to stab him, but Cassio's coat gets in the way. Cassio turns and stabs Rodrigo, and Iago, sneaking up behind, gives Cassio a wound, but not enough of one. Othello hears as he's walking past and decides that this is Iago keeping his promise to kill Cassio. He just doesn't know how manipulated that promise is. So Othello turns to approach Desdemona. But a commotion has been stirred up by the attack and several people run in, including Ludovico and Graciano. Iago runs up like he's trying to help and in the process stabs Rodrigo, ending his life. So he can't snitch. Cassio's leg is badly wounded, so much that he may not walk again. And Bianca, hearing that Cassio has been wounded, runs out to see how he's doing. Iago uses this as an opportunity to put all the blame on her. She's the one who's been plotting against him. And oh, poor Rodrigo's dead. Gentlemen all, says Iago, I do suspect this trash to be party in this injury. He acts as though Bianca were the manipulator, tricking Rodrigo into attacking Cassio for her. As Iago makes Bianca look more and more guilty, Emilia runs in to find out what's going on. Iago explains his version of the story and asks Emilia to look up where Cassio was staying at supper. And of course he was supping with Bianca, and so it makes her look more guilty. And so Iago tells his wife to run to inform Othello of what has happened to Cassio. At the end of scene one, Iago has an aside. He says, this is the night that either makes me or foredoes me quite. He's gotten to the most complex part of his machination, and everything is coming together. And either he's going to be destroyed by this, or he's going to win. Bum bum bum. And so we turn to the final scene of the play, which is the scene between Desdemona and Othello. Othello enters, and Desdemona is already asleep. And once again, we have that contrast between innocence and guilt. Othello kisses her while she sleeps and says, Oh, balmy breath that doth almost persuade justice to break her sword. She has such a beauty and an innocence that it makes him feel almost as if he should just quit this whole adventure of murdering her. But then she wakes. We have an extremely intense dialogue here as Othello stands over her ready to kill her. He asks her if she has prayed, and she says yes. He says, if you bethink yourself of any crime unreconciled as yet to heaven and grace, solicit for it straight. Of course, she doesn't know what he means, and. He says, well, do it, and be brief, I will walk by. I would not kill thy unprepared spirit. No, heaven forfend, I would not kill thy soul. Once she hears that he's ready to kill, she is more and more frightened and claims innocence, and he finally tells her what's bothering him. Othello accuses her of loving Cassio, which she denies. She says that she'd never love Cassio, but with the general warranty of heaven, as I might love. And when Othello brings up the handkerchief, she says, he must have found it. Let him confess a truth. Othello says, he hath confessed, and then goes on to say, his mouth is stopped. Honest Iago hath ta'en order for it. And Desdemona realizes that Othello has had Cassio killed. She's horrified, and Desdemona's response says, alas, he is betrayed and I am undone. Othello takes this as a confession of guilt and then begins to kill her. She begs for one more night, she begs for one more half hour, she begs for one more moment to say a prayer, but he smothers her. As he is killing her, Amelia is knocking on the door. 
but Othello holds on just long enough to make sure Desdemona's dead before opening. Then he says, what's best to do? If she come in, she'll sure speak to my wife. My wife? My wife? What wife? I have no wife. Oh, insupportable. Oh, heavy hour, methinks it should be now a huge eclipse of sun and moon, and that of the frighted globe should yawn at alteration. This moment has destroyed his world. Interesting that he points out the sort of cataclysmic feeling. There should be an eclipse, there should be some sign in the heavens. There are signs in the heavens in a lot of Shakespeare's plays, and there are moments in many of Shakespeare's plays in which the whole fate of a country or a nation or an empire hangs in the balance. In this case, the only thing that hangs in the balance is the truth of love and faithfulness. Yet that matters. He opens the door to Amelia, and Amelia comes in to tell of what happened between Cassio and Rodrigo. When Othello finds that it was Rodrigo in the attack, and not Iago, and that Rodrigo's dead but not Cassio, he's very confused and confounded. Then murder's out of tune, and sweet revenge grows harsh. In the midst of this, Desdemona, who is not quite dead, says, oh, falsely, falsely murdered. Amelia rushes to her, and Desdemona is in the process of dying. Amelia asks, oh, who hath done this deed? Desdemona says, nobody, I myself, farewell. Commend me to my kind lord, oh, farewell. <sighs> She's true to him even in the moment of her death, taking the blame on herself instead of letting him be blamed for it. She calls him her kind lord at the very end when obviously he is the farthest thing from that. Othello, though, refuses to accept her forgiveness of him. She's like a liar gone to burning hell. Twas I that killed her. Amelia is horrified, of course. The more angel she, and you the blacker devil. When Othello says, she was false as water, Amelia replies, thou art rash as fire to say that she was false. Oh, she was heavenly true. The contrast between Othello and Desdemona is stark here. Her trueness even to her death, and his anger and his betrayal of her like water versus fire. But when Othello says Cassio and her were having an affair, and he says, Iago knew about it, Iago told me about it, Emilia is suddenly struck. She repeats over and over again, my husband, my husband? And suddenly the veil is lifted from her eyes and she realizes what's been going on this whole time. Her husband Iago has been the one manipulating Othello. And it's not till now that she sees it. Emilia feels that Othello may kill her as well, but she's not afraid anymore. She shouts for help. And she says to Othello, Thou hast not half the power to do me harm as I have to be hurt. She's already been so hurt by seeing her mistress destroyed by Othello that she can no longer be hurt. When Emilia raises the cry and everyone rushes in, they see the whole scene here. Emilia cries out immediately to Iago and says, Disprove this villain if thou beest a man. He says thou toldst him that his wife was false. I know thou didst not. Thou art not such a villain. Speak, for my heart is full. And Iago replies, I told him what I thought, and told no more than what he found himself was apt and true. Now Iago is in a pinch between two people. He can no longer be completely true to Amelia, and yet prove himself still true to Othello. And so instead he tries to quiet down Amelia. Amelia cries, Villainy, villainy, villainy! I think on it! I think! I smelt! Oh, villainy! I thought so then! I'll kill myself for grief! Oh, villainy, villainy! The villain that she suspected earlier it turns out to be her husband, and now she sees it clear. Othello won't listen. He says he knows that Desdemona was false, because only if she were false is he right in killing her, and the truth would be too horrible. He defends his action by saying that Cassio confessed it, and that Cassio had her handkerchief. Emilia immediately realizes the horror of what she's done. Iago tries to silence her, even pulls out his knife to kill his own wife. But Emilia says, Twill out, twill out, I peace. No, I will speak as liberal as the North. Let heaven and men and devils, let them all, all, all cry shame against me, yet I'll speak. When Iago attacks her, they hold him back. And she says, Oh, thou dull moor, that handkerchief thou speakest of, I found by fortune, and did give my husband. For often upon solemn earnestness, more than indeed belonged to such a trifle, he begged me to steal it. She gave it Cassio? No, alas, I found it, and did give it my husband. By heaven, I do not, I do not lie, gentlemen. O oh, murderous coxcomb, what should such a fool do with so good a wife? When Othello reaches to attack Iago, they hold him back, giving Iago a moment to stab Emilia and kill her. And then Iago rushes from the room. Everyone else rushes out after him, after disarming Othello. Emilia falls onto the bed, singing the same song that her mistress sang before, Willow, 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 and is joined with Desdemona in death. As everyone else has pursued Iago, Othello pulls out his second sword he has hidden there. 
He's grieving over his wife who he wronged as they pull Iago back into the room, having captured him. Othello jumps to attack him, but only manages to wound him, keeping him still alive. And they wrench the sword out of Othello's grip again. Othello is happy he hasn't killed Iago, saying, I'm not sorry neither, I'll have thee live, for in my sense tis happiness to die. Othello calls Iago a demi-devil who hath ensnared his soul and body, but Iago refuses to speak any more, or incriminate himself any more. Demand me nothing, what you know you know, from this time forth I never will speak word. He responds to the rest in silence. But there's plenty of evidence to convict him in the letters of Rodrigo, where we hear Rodrigo's side of the way Iago's been playing him all along. Lodovico is about to take Iago away to torture him, when Othello pauses them and says, Soft you, a word or two before you go. I have done the state some service, and they know it. No more of that. I pray you, in your letters, when you shall these unlucky deeds relate, speak of me as I am. Nothing is extenuate nor set down aught in malice, then you must speak of one that loved not wisely, but too well, of one not easily jealous, but being wrought perplexed in the extreme, of one whose hand, like the base Indian, threw a pearl away, richer than all his tribe, of one whose subdued eyes, albeit unused to the melting mood, drop tears as fast as the Arabian trees, their medicinable gum, set you down this, and say besides that in Aleppo once, where a malignant and turbaned Turk beat a Venetian and traduced the state, I took by the throat the circumcised dog and smote him thus. All that spoke is marred. I kissed thee ere I killed thee. No way but this, killing myself to die upon a kiss. Othello had another hidden weapon and kills himself in the final moment. And so we see in conclusion that there is a moment of realization in Othello when he realizes what he has done to the most precious pearl. And we have a mirror to that story in the Gospels of the pearl of great price, which when found is worth more than all a person possesses. And so he sells all he has to buy that pearl. Here he has thrown away the most valuable thing to himself for everything else. If there is not a complete loss in this moment, it is that in the fact Othello discovers there is such a thing as purity, as faithfulness, and as innocence in Desdemona. And though he has destroyed it and lost it, it's still true. Thanks for watching. You can click on my icon to subscribe or click on one of the other videos to watch again. If you like me talking about Othello, you should go ahead and watch one of my other Shakespeare videos. I've got Hamlet, and I'm coming up with some others really soon. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.